Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel. This is Guntur Medical College, Department of Anatomy. In this video, we will see the gross features of the left lung. Already we have seen the features of the right lung in the previous video. Those who have not seen that, you see that so that in the previous video, I have covered the, all the features. What is apex, base, uh, anterior border, posterior border, costal surface, medial surface. So in this video, we will see only the main difference between the medial surface of right lung and left lung. So if you see the previous video, it will be useful for you. So quickly to revise, what is apex? Apex of the lung is the part of the lung above the impression. If you think this is the first strip, part of the lung above the impression of the first strip. That is the apex of the lung and this is the base of the lung. To keep the lung in anatomical position, you should not tell always lobes and fissures. You should tell keep the apex above, base below, sharp anterior border in front. So this is the sharp anterior border and this is the blunt posterior border and this is the costal surface you can see the impressions of the ribs and this is the medial surface. This medial surface is again divided into mediastinal surface and vertebral part related to the vertebral bodies. So these are all the same except the mediastinal impressions differ on the right lung and the left lung. Now we will see the mediastinal surface of the left lung. So as we have to start always with the hilum, so this is the hilum of the left lung. Hilum of the left lung contains only one bronchus, so this is the one bronchus, left principal bronchus which is below the pulmonary artery, so it is hypoarterial. So there is no epiarterial bronchus in the hilum of the left lung. The other contents are same as the hilum of the right lung, pulmonary artery, pulmonary veins, bronchial vessels. Above the hilum of the lung, or you see left lung this is, so this is related to the arch of the iota. So this is the arch of the iota impressions, impression from the arch of iota you can see this is the proof for the pulmonary trunk. So in front of the hilum, so this is the cardiac impression if you compare the right lung and left lung, this cardiac impression is very deeper because it is related to the muscular left ventricle. Behind the hilum of the lung, so this is arch of iota, so it will be related to descending thoracic iota. So simple for you, arch of iota continues as descending thoracic iota. From the arch of iota, behind the impression of the pulmonary trunk, this impression is for the left subclavian artery, which is the last branch of the arch of the iota. Then behind this left subclavian artery, if you see this part is related to the esophagus, and again between this thoracic iota and the hilum of the lung, this part is again related to the esophagus. So the left lung is related two times to the esophagus. Again same as the right lung, in front is related to left phrenic nerve and behind the hilum it is related to the left vagus nerve. So all the others uh, differences we have seen, one more difference between the left lung and the right lung, are you seeing this uh, tongue like projection, this is called as the lingula. So this is present only in the left lung and not in the right lung. So above the lingula this part is called as the cardiac notch. So and this is the lingula and that is the cardiac notch. If you see again now the difference between the right lung and left lung, I will show this is the right lung and this is the left lung. One more difference you have to see, this right lung will have the two fissures, this is the oblique fissure, but you see in this right lung there is no transverse fissure. That's what I was telling from the beginning, you should not tell the lobes and fissures. So you have to keep the apex above, base below, sharp anterior border in front. Even though it has only two lobes, this is the right lung. So this is right lung having only one fissure. This fissure is the oblique fissure. This oblique fissure will start from the start from the mediastinal surface of the hilum, mediastinal surface of the lung. It will cut the posterior border. Then it will run on the costal surface and then it will cut the inferior border. One more fissure which is absent in this right lung, here is this, or very, very uh, shallow, this is the transverse fissure which is starting from the oblique fissure to the anterior border of the left lung. So what is this function of the fissures and lobes of the lung? As if they act as the plane of the cleavage, so the upper lobe is moving above and forward by the movement of the ribs and the lower lobe is moving downwards and backwards by the action of the diaphragm as if this acts as a two plane of the cleavage. So we have seen in detail 
the mediastinal surface of the left lung and the difference between the right lung and the left left lung so to summarize mediastinal surface of the left lung above the hilum arch of aorta and behind the hilum descending thoracic aorta in front of the hilum cardiac impression above the arch of aorta pulmonary trunk and also the left subclavian artery esophagus is related two times to this this is the one time between the hilum and the descending thoracic aorta and behind the left subclavian artery two nerves related are left phrenic nerve and left vagus nerve the remaining details we have covered in the previous video we have uh, one more important aspect in the features of the lung is bronchopulmonary segment which we can't see in this what is bronchopulmonary segment and 10 segments on the both lungs we have covered in the separate video you go through that bronchopulmonary segments may be asked separately i hope you should have understood this thank you